Welcome to Spiritual Calf Day. Your chapel staff is very proud to be part of this important day of Airman Resiliency. We believe it's important for you to hear from your local chaplain corps. So we put together a fun video that will help portray our hopes and desires for our airmen here at Beale as it relates to your ability to choose or not choose to exercise any particular faith. We hope the following will make you laugh, but more importantly, we hope that it will help better inform you on what our expectations are for you, and that's to respect one another's freedom, to practice their faith, or choose to have no faith at all. You want to turn it in? Yeah, that's all right. That's great. Sure. Y'all see that game last night? It was intense. Heck yeah! I haven't seen a football game like that in years. Clearly this young airman was talking about the last game of the World Series. It was epic, way better than any football game there is. Respectfully speaking, sir. You guys are all fools. Clearly, she was talking about basketball. That game last night was the first game of the season for the Kings, and that shot at the buzzer? Ridiculous! I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I was talking about the USA vs. Canada curling match. Expert broom handling. Curling? Sliding rocks on the ice? That is not a sport. Why are we talking about sports anyways? I hate sports. It's such a waste of time. I think people should spend more time reading or maybe learning about something. I've read the stats on every football game, and I know I'm the smartest one in the room for that. Figures you'd say something like that. Civilians never have to worry about getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> when you're playing basketball, Think it takes teamwork. Baseball, guys. If only these Neanderthals would learn to appreciate classical music and the opera. I cannot believe that Airman watches curling. I say she's number one to me, though, but. That means number one on her EPR, too. I'm hurt that the Major doesn't appreciate the elegant art of curling. Maybe I should report him. Baseball is America's pastime. I am so glad I'm PCSing to St. Louis next month, where I can watch the cards play every night. Football. Football. I love football. I'm telling my buddy in assignments they should send Senior Master Sergeant to Thule. He hates the cold and there's no basketball for thousands of miles. Good point. A valid point. We're actually Baseball's physically American's moving for the whole game. We all know this is a comical demonstration of something that would most likely never happen. And I hope it made you laugh. But I want us all to see how important it is for us to respect each other in our workplace, even though we may vehemently hate our friend's favorite sports team. Obviously our concern today isn't about a sports team. It's about something that our nation cherishes even more than sports. People remember firsts. You may not remember the 19th president of the United States, but I guarantee you, you remember the first. We put importance on firsts. Neil Armstrong was the first man to walk on the moon. Chuck Yeager was the first to break the sound barrier. You remember your first love, your first kiss. The point is that firsts matter to us. And when something is given first position, or first place, it's for a reason, and we should never look past it. So, what is the very first thing that our Constitution has to say in its amendments? Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. When Madison and his cohorts drafted the amendments to the Constitution, also known as the Bill of Rights, they originally proposed 12. When Congress sent the 12 along to the states for ratification, the states rejected the first two, which dealt with the ratio of constituents to each congressional representative and congressional pay, and thereby made the free exercise of religion the First Amendment to the Constitution. They knew how important it was to be free from a government that would declare one religion is correct, but it also recognized that the government should never prohibit the free exercise of religion. I want each of us to remember that we took an oath we swore to defend the Constitution of the United States. That means each day that we don this uniform, we are swearing to protect the rights of every American citizen to worship freely. You also need to understand that you don't give up the right to worship your God or worship no God at all when you put on your uniform. You are protecting your right to the freedom of religion just as much as a civilian. Let me remind you of another first, AFI 1-1. 2.11 says every airman is free to practice the religion of their choice or subscribe to no religious belief at all. 
You should confidently practice your own beliefs while respecting others whose viewpoints differ from your own. Every airman also has the right to individual expressions of sincerely held beliefs to include conscience, moral principles, or religious beliefs unless those expressions would have an adverse impact on military readiness, unit cohesion, good order, discipline, health and safety, or mission accomplishment. Paragraph 2.11 is also balanced with paragraph 2.12, which states, leaders at all levels must balance constitutional protections for their own free exercise of religion, including individual expressions of religious beliefs, and the constitutional prohibition against governmental establishment of religion. They must ensure their own words and actions cannot reasonably be construed to be officially endorsing or disapproving of or extending preferential treatment for any faith, belief, or absence of belief. This doesn't mean that a commander or supervisor can't confidently practice his or her religion. Commanders and supervisors are allowed to confidently practice just as an Airman Basic, an Air Force civilian, or a four-star general. Being able to profess what one believes, regardless of rank or position, is something we should all respect and appreciate. There should not be discrimination at any level based on what one believes or does not believe about God. Commanders and supervisors have been selected for their positions because they've proven to be good leaders. If you're in the subordinate role, you shouldn't have to fear discrimination from a supervisor or commander for what you believe. But the opposite is also true. A commander or supervisor should not fear allegations from subordinates for practicing their own beliefs or non-beliefs about God. As diverse as the Air Force is, we should relish the opportunities we have to learn about others' religious beliefs and have cordial discussions. I would suggest that many of our chats about spirituality would be much less heated than many arguments about which sport is better. Here's what this all boils down to. Your Beale Chaplain Corps hopes and expects that each of us will respect the faith or lack thereof, or beliefs or non-beliefs of our brothers and sisters in arms. There are people around the globe each day that lose their lives because they don't believe in the religion of the ruling party. What a privilege it is to be serving a nation that cared enough to make sure none of us are ever forced to follow one set of beliefs over another. It's our privilege as a chaplain corps to serve our nation's finest and ensure your religious freedoms. God bless Team Beale.